we're still doing this. We are still still playing the Ukraine great Ukraine game in the United States. You know, Republicans have pretty much put a stop to it for the most part. Right. You, you've still got a lot of stragglers behind on that. But up here in Canada, uh, we're way behind the conservative party, the liberal party. Everybody's in lockstep and unison about Ukraine support. A lot of people watching this are going to say, I knew from the beginning that this was pretty much, you know, a scam situation here. Like we, we've jumped into this war. You've had uh, Republicans like Lindsey Graham supporting this sort of thing since 2013, supporting Ukraine, telling them that they, they're going to give them whatever they want for the unforeseeable future. And a lot of people were able to tell with how much this was pushed in the news media and how much the narrative was forced that it was going to be an attempt at at creating a new money pit, the new Iraq, Afghanistan, a new place to just funnel money into, keep the war machine going. And it's getting support still from the conservatives here, obviously from the liberal government, but the conservatives here are lock and step promoting that. So the latest $3 billion that they gave to the Ukraine, a, bit, a little more than a week ago at this point, a lot of people aren't going to check to see what's in that, but we are. We're going to go ahead and go through some of the most ridiculous things in it. And, you know, you can make an argument for some of the stuff that's in it milita militaristically, even though I disagree with that. That would be more of an argument that they could make. But there is stuff in there way too much to do with gender, way too much to do with stuff that has nothing to do with Canadians. On the surface, none of this has to do with Canadians. Are you going to justify this by saying Russia is going to invade the rest of Europe and therefore the world if they're not stopped in Ukraine? You can try to claim that. You can try to claim an economy the size of Russia has some ability to take over the world. It's not true. Just because they have a better military than Ukraine doesn't mean they're going to somehow be able to fight a world war or even fight any NATO country. So here's the, the press release from the office of Justin Trudeau. And here's the 3.2 billion for 2024. Now we've got 45 million for new peace and security assistance. It will help support and expedite demining de efforts in Ukraine. Now that's something that's going to come up a lot. Demining efforts, of course, the removal of mines. Nobody calls it demining in military terms. It's usually called explosive ordnance disposal, EOD, or even X you can do for explosives, but uh, this is the Canadian government we're talking about, and you're going to see that a few mentioned a few times in here as a lot a part of their effort. Now, support for Canadian Security Intelligence Service, thirty million dollars. Okay, you can again argue if we're going to be involved in this war, then you want to give them money for military assistance. But here's where it starts to go a little bit haywire. An immediate red flag, fifteen million dollars. Support to complete the National Museum of Holodomor Genocide Funding. This project will support... This project funding will support the completion of the National Museum of the Holodomor Genocide in Kiev, or Kiev, as we're trying to say now, helping preserve the memory of victims and survivors of the Holodomor, a sy systemic and heinous campaign of deliberate starvation by the Soviet re regime that killed millions across Ukraine in 1932 and 33. Great, right? Celebrate history celebrate you know um or commemorate the things that happened in your history why am i paying for it why are we paying for a museum in the ukraine is this required for them to fight the war is the museum a secret missile silo that we don't know about why do we need to pay for ukraine's museum to be built and why does it need to be built in wartime that's red flag number one. Fifteen million dollars for a museum that none of us care about. Not a single one of you watching, not a single person in Canada cares about this so much that they're willing to say, hey, fifteen million dollars should go toward toward this. I'm confident in saying I'll up the you know, the differentiating factor to upwards of five hundred people care. Canada International Finance Corporation Facility for Resilient Food Systems Funding. $50 million. Again, you can make an argument for that. You can make an argument that you want them to have money to uh, to get food, uh, process meat for domestic and international markets. I mean, you, you 
I would say no. I don't. I would say that I don't need to pay to help Ukraine process meat for domestic and international markets. I don't. I don't think that I'm required to pay for that. Reinforcing essential mental health services. Now, when you hear mental health services in North America, you know it basically means nothing. And we're being very critical of this bill because it's your money going across the world for things that have nothing to do with the war. Russia's war in Ukraine will have long-lasting negative effects on the mental health of Ukrainians. Men, women, and children experience mental health trauma in different ways. This project from the WHO, oh, I see, will contribute to strengthening the systems for and delivery of mental health and psychological support in Ukraine. Specifically, Canada's contributions Supporting the three strategic priorities, strengthening mental health and socio- psychosocial support, advancing Ukraine's capacity to provide comprehensive and human rights-oriented mental health and social care services, and responding to the mental health needs of vulnerable populations during emergencies. Um, you're in a war. Bad things are going to happen in war. I don't want to give money to the World Health Organization so that they can do mental health work for another country. That is not my responsibility. That's not Canada's responsibility. You will find no place in the world where they would spend their own money during a war, during a large-scale war. The entire country's at war, right? It's different when you're fighting a proxy war, right? If it was um, the American invasion of Iraq, you would say, yes, the soldiers that come back, need to. we need to put some money towards their mental health. But if we were in a world war, where your country has been invaded. You don't, you're not, uh, you're not focusing on the WHO's mental health projects. I'm sorry, harsh, but this is our money. Reconstruction efforts, supporting local development and reconstruction effort efforts in Ukraine's Ramadas, $10 million. But don't worry, this isn't just to build stuff. We, we can talk about it. Build on Ukraine's efforts to support decentralized recovery. Canada's contribution will establish small grants and technical assistance mechanism to empower community-based and civil society organizations to lead. Blah, 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 blah. But don't forget that this $10 million will support the implementation of inclusive, gender-responsive, and durable priorities through grant support and capacity building trading. They are using your tax money to pretend that they're doing gender work in the Ukraine. Gender responsive and durable community priorities. Implement inclusive, gender responsive, and durable community priorities. What does this mean? Again, you know that these buzzwords don't mean anything. Inclusive, gender responsive. You know that they don't mean anything, but they are going to bank on the fact that you're not going to read this so that they can pass it through, and it means nothing. It's just going to go into people's pockets. You know it, I know it. Allegedly, right? Support Ukraine's reforms and governance. And, and at this point, we can skip to the end, right? Inclusive, or, or even the middle, inclusive recovery component. And then we can go to respond to the specific needs of women and girls, returning veterans, marginalized groups, and those are displaced by war. Aren't you just bored of this speak? The the jig is up, right? The I'm I can confidently say the jig is up when it comes to marginalized groups and specific needs of women and girls. How about just help everyone? How about we don't need to spe- specify which particular groups, subsections of genders and race we need? What marginalized groups are there in Ukraine currently, other than Ukrainians? If you want me to believe that it's good for us to help Ukraine in this war. Then when when you start saying the marginalized groups and inclusive recovery, then you lose me. You lose me and anyone else who is on your side. Because what we're talking about right now is the conservatives backing up the silliness that is this. So if there's conservatives that want you to support this, you point to these things. Hey, Pierre. Hey, whomever. Doug Ford. When they say they're giving $4 million to help marginalized groups, what does that mean? And then you can present it alongside another project of some some sort that uses terms like this, gender-inclusive marginalized groups, and it's supposed to be things that we don't stand for. Humanitarian funding, 
peace, security, and stabilization funding. You know, a lot of it's saying the same thing. But here's some more gender-inclusive stuff. Gender-inclusive demining for sustainable futures in Ukraine. Now, this is one that made a lot of headlines. Gender-inclusive demining for sustainable futures in Ukraine. The project from the Halo Trust aims to safeguard the lives and livelihoods of Ukrainians, including women and internally displaced persons, by addressing the threat of explosive ordnance presence across vast areas of the country. Makes sense. But you've got to establish a gender and diversity working group a gender and diversity working group to promote gender transformative mine action in Ukraine. Translated into English. This means we need to have women deal with explosives. Now you can, uh, you can, you can do some guesswork on why that's happening. Is it because all the men are at war, but just say that we need money to fund people to demine things. But what you're telling me is, and, and what you're using by saying this gender inclusive language, we don't want to discriminate against women. We want them to be able to be blown up by minds as well. And if you look into the Halo Trust, the Halo Trust promotes women in war torn countries disposing of explosives and says it's empowering. We'll bring it up right now. They say that's empowering for a woman in a country that's been ravaged by war to risk her life blowing themselves up. I mean, I guess this is what the feminists have asked for, asked for is to be included in things like this, you know, sewer workers, garbage men. That's what equality truly means, I guess. But now you are paying $4 million so that we can send women out to, to get rid of landmines. Is that something that you're proud of? Is that something that Justin Trudeau, Justin Trudeau might be proud of that for all Canadians? But that's what it's saying. Four million dollars. Get those ladies out there. <laughs> Community based protection and effective civil military engagement in Ukraine. I haven't read this one. Is this one going to include any? We don't have any buzzwords in that one, I don't think. But demining sustainability support mentorships. You got to mentor people for their, their demining project. Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining Support Program for Ukraine. 1.5 million. Canada recognizes the importance of decontaminating Ukraine's territory as quickly and effectively as possible. This funding will support the efforts of the Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining to enhance the capacity of Ukraine Mine Action Institutes to implement effective and gender-responsive mine action operations. So not only do we want the $4 million to go to Ukraine, we want to get $1.5 million into the Swiss company to help Ukraine make their gender-responsive mine a uh, action operations, you know, bring that to life. Here's a good one. This is one that needs a lot of focus here. Strengthening truth, transparency, and democracy to counter disinformation funding. $930,000 for propaganda. That's what it is. You'll know it in a second. Canada is providing funding to inter, inter news Ukraine to help enhance the literary and fact checking capabilities, literacy and fact checking capability of Ukraine's media in order to better counter disinformation uh, in the country. This project includes a comprehensive skills transfer program to enhance the capacity of Ukrainian journalists and civil society organizations to carry out fact-checking and verifications. When you hear this, oh, this initiative will also address gender disparity issues in the Ukraine media. Lovely. When you hear the state is battling disinformation in Canada or in the United States, does that ever mean a good thing or does that mean that they want to censor you? So why should we allow it for Ukraine? Why should we allow our money to go towards that? A million dollars almost so they could fight disinformation. Do you, do you see how easily this money gets mismanaged once you give it the old thumbs up? Now, the conservative leaders in the country are benefiting from a time where people are more worried about transgenders in sports, the insane immigration we're going through, inflation, uh, carbon tax, all that stuff. They're lucky that things are so bad that they can just sweep this under the rug. People aren't going to fight this battle right now. But it's billions of dollars. And I know that you know, just like I know, that all of a sudden when the government starts saying, hey, we've got billions of dollars that we're willing to give away, that tells you that they've been hiding a lot of money from you. And that tells you that they're taking a lot more money from you than they need to. Because they've just got billions to give away. 
Here's a million dollars for disinformation campaigns. Here's a uh, few other million dollars for including women and in getting their arms and legs blown off, turning into the pink mist, as they call it in the industry. Here's another, uh, what was it, $15 million for a museum. When you're sitting there thinking about the Ukrainian people and, and you're sympathetic and, and somebody says, we need to send money over there. And you're like, yeah. And then somebody says, we need to do it for women to demine things and, and go into minefields. You're like, yeah, I guess we need it so that the government can squash disinformation. You're just like, OK. And then they say we need a bunch of money to build a museum. Maybe just maybe if if you heard that on the parliament floor, you'd be against it and they wouldn't get away with it as much. But I don't know. I, I feel like the conservatives might feel like this is this is too much of a battle for them to fight. I think their lead is so big they could say almost anything right now as long as it was correct and true, which they should be doing. But they're still this shows they're still afraid. I think that most people when they when they throw their support behind Ukraine at this point, even though, you know, it has been what it is for some time now, it's more of like, I don't want the, I don't want the, the main federal party to be mad at me. I'm, I'm going to say, I support Ukraine. I'm going to say that it's obvious. And, and you can see the people who did that. The people who said the war is almost over. Ukraine's winning. Ukraine's amazing. Even though Ukraine shut down churches they shut down all other media outlets. Notice they only mentioned one media out th outlet there specifically. They said no other political parties. Um, but as long as they're helping women defuse landmines, as long as we're giving the WHO money and a Geneva nonprofit organization money, and as long as we're building a museum, it's all fine. People need to question this whenever it happens. Whenever there's a bi so easily a bipartisan agreement on anything, it's probably not a probably not a good sense um, that that it's that it's something that you're going to like because when they can sweep something under the rug together, they're going to do it. It's never that easy.